Hey, it's Alex from Android Central, and this is the HTC Butterfly 2. It's a new high-end handset from HTC targeted at Asia, and the third in this line of phones after the original Butterfly and Butterfly S. So what we have here is essentially a plastic-bodied foam with HTC One M8 level internals, water and dust resistance, and an upgraded 13 megapixel camera. And depending on which model you pick up, you'll either get a matte white finish like ours here, or glossy red or blue. The overall physical feel is a lot like earlier butterfly devices, as well as the HTC One E8. Flattened sides, curvy corners, and a gently angled back, which makes it easy to hold despite its relative heft. It doesn't feel as premium or as special as the M8, but it's solid, and you can forgive some of the bulk given that you're getting a water-resistant foam without any fiddly plastic flaps. Around the front there's a 5-inch 1080p screen that looks about as good as the M8's, though the lowest level for auto brightness seems to be very low compared to that phone, and combined with the white trim around our review unit, this can make it very difficult to see at times. It's easy enough to get around this issue by manually controlling the brightness level, but it's there nonetheless. Around the sides you've got the usual assortment of ports and buttons, volume on the right, power up top once again next to the IR blaster. Fortunately though, the Butterfly 2 inherits the M8's motion launch feature, giving you an easy way to unlock the phone with a double tap or gesture, rather than reaching up to the top. Internal hardware is also close to that of the M8, but with bumps in a few areas. A 2.5GHz Snapdragon 801, 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage. There's also a fixed battery at 2700mAh. The small amount of extra juice doesn't make a huge difference to longevity, but the Butterfly 2, like the HTC One, was able to get us comfortably through a full day of heavy usage. On the software side, it's a very familiar story again, effectively identical to what you'd find on an M8. The Butterfly 2 runs HTC Sense 6 atop Android 4.4.2 KitKat, so right now you're a version behind what's on some HTC phones, but that's not a huge deal since HTC is updating many of its built-in apps through the Play Store these days. In any case, all our favourite HTC features like the BlinkFeed launcher which brings in social news updates, the array of themes, and the gallery app with Zoe video highlights have made it across the Butterfly. The most interesting change is probably the camera. The Butterfly has an upgraded 13 megapixel camera, not the mediocre one used in some earlier HTC phones, backed up by dual tone LED flash and an additional duo camera to sense depth information. Like the M8, this depth information can be used to apply artistic and 3D effects to your photos, but the novelty soon wears off. What's more useful is the improved image quality thanks to the Butterfly's new 13 megapixel sensor. Dynamic range is noticeably improved compared to earlier HTC phones, and there's less visible noise in images too. There is still stuff to complain about, fine detail isn't as sharp as we'd like, and the camera is prone to producing dark, blotchy areas in low light. So it's not going to compete with the very best smartphone cameras out there, but it's the best we've seen in an HTC device to date. All considered, it's probably not fair to say the Butterfly is objectively better or worse than the M8, it's just kind of different. With it, HTC can boast a compelling water-resistant smartphone with all the M8's headline features and a mostly improved camera, and offer it in markets where the Butterfly brand holds value. Overall, it's not as compelling as the M8, mainly due to the plastic design, but it's still a perfectly good smartphone, and if water resistance is a priority for you, then the Butterfly 2 is definitely worth considering.